All right, guys, this is my favorite place to be when I'm trying to assess my horse's health. You're like, you're in an empty stall. That's right. Stall cleaning and assessing your stall is the best way to know about your horse, particularly when we start dealing with some of these health-related issues that can cause hydration-related problems, so, such as dehydration. So one of the things that I'm very cautious about is I don't want my horse to get dehydrated. Dehydration, maybe because of sweating or them not drinking enough or other health-related issues can lead to horse colicking and then potentially dying. So I am constantly checking to see their hydration level. When I'm in a stall, what I'm looking at is, of course, their feces. Um, and you'll hear some vets talk about what's called a smush test. And that's exactly it. It's smushing it to see it shouldn't be so dry that it's crumbly. At the same point, it shouldn't be so oozy that there's not much there to smush, okay? So this is like really good, healthy feces here. It also gives you a good chance when you're looking at it to, you know, again, assess, you know, are there any like whole kernels or maybe particularly parasites, things like that, that can cause additional gastric-related gastric health issues. Um, but again, from a hydration standpoint, that's something I'm looking at to see that the feces is healthy. I'm also looking in the stall to see where they may have some wet spots. Um, he's got his nice little wet spot here, not excessive, but I'm gonna show you another stall where we see a little more excessiveness and some of the things I'm gonna consider. Other things that I'm looking at in the stall um, is I'm also seeing, first of all, we have salt blocks in our stall, seeing whether or not they're eating and chewing on it, are they overly doing, maybe they're getting a little too much, and then making sure their water buckets you know, how much are they drinking? That's the one thing nice about having them in stalls versus an open water trough. I can monitor how much that they're actually drinking. So I can say if I've got a horse that let's say has a lot of urination, how much are they actually drinking from that, okay? So that's extremely important too. So you'd want to monitor that. Now this horse is stall. This is my horse here, um, Chippy. Now this is the one that I have problems with tying up related issues, so polysaccharide storage myopathy. One of the common problems you'll see with these horses is a lot of times when they get really stressed, they start to tie up, you'll see them excessively sweating. Um, so I'm monitoring that because not only does that mean I need, they could potentially have dehydration issues, but it is also a sign for me that potentially they're having some issues with that tying up at that time. Um, the other thing that I look at for a horse like this, uh, particularly down south, you'll find um, a lot of these excessive sweating horses eventually over time may acquire what we call antihydrosis. So it's not a, you know, again, you may not see that, um, but you do want to monitor it. So I want to monitor, you know, how even are they sweating um, and then how excessively are they sweating. You know, right now he's been out in the sun and so he's got a little bit of some sweat marks here. If all of a sudden I start to see a change in this normal pattern, whether it gets excessively worse or starts to disappear in certain areas, that may be a, a red flag, okay? Um, the other thing I'm going to kind of check, especially while they're traveling on the road or when he's at a show because it is intensifying his muscles, I'm going to make sure, does he have enough hydration in his diet? So I may end up not only making sure he's got plenty of waters and electrolytes, but I may go ahead and soak his feed, soak his hay, do things like that um, overall to help, okay? Um, moving on from here, so then we're going to talk about another horse and another stall, so assessing another stall. Um, one of the things I mentioned with um, Chippy is he and um, this horse right here, Val, can actually get um, stressed while they're on the road, okay? Digestive stress a lot of times can cause additional issues. If they're really upset, it may cause diarrhea. It may cause where they don't want to drink anything. Um, so here I use, this is Ulcer Guard, um, while I'm traveling on the road with these horses that have gastric-related issues. Chippy's an example of that that has gastric ulcers. So again, we'll have to monitor to make sure that those changes aren't causing issues with him losing a lot of water because let's say he's got more diarrhea or on the flip side, maybe he's not drinking a lot because his, his stomach is upset. That can all lead over time to, again, colic related problems. So again, you may see, and I use this for, and we'll talk about our older horse here, Val, that's a problem that we can get into. Um, another thing, so while you're on the road, if you've got horses that are already, such as Chippy, um, that maybe don't, uh, you know, excess, or they do excessively sweat because they have antihydrosis, 
or Val, her case, or, or had, he didn't have antihydrosis, but he has um, polysaccharide storage myopathy, or you have a horse that actually has antihydrosis like Val, I'm going to watch their electrolyte level. So this is electrolyte paste. Um, and so before I go on the road and travel with them, I'll actually go ahead and give this before I load them up into a trailer. Um, and then I can supplement with the powder supplement, um, you know, of course, electrolyte blocks while we're at home. But that's something, too, you want to think about. Now, with Val, one of the problems I get into with her, um, when her digestive tract gets upset and it gets, you know, traveling there, causes a lot of stress, she'll actually have more diarrhea more than anything else. Um, not as much chippy, but with her, she will. That diarrhea eventually can cause colic. So here you see this is called BioSponge. Um, and that'll help to kind of settle it up. Think of it like um, Pepto-Bismol or something to that effect, Tom's. Um, it'll help that stomach so it can settle it up because again, I don't want her losing so much water um, because her stomach's upset and she's got diarrhea. So again, I'm gonna be checking the stalls, watching her, um, checking even while they're in the trailer, monitoring those kinds of things. Now with her, one of the things that I note with her recently that I kind of monitor, um, over time is, if you'll notice, her stall has a lot more wet stuff than some of the other ones in here. Um, and so one of the concerns we get into with older horses is um, insulin resistance, Cushing's disease, um, and those are things that you've got to start monitoring. And of course, just like if you were diagnosed with diabetes, one of the first things you'll do is start drinking more water um, and urinating more because of it. So as I start to see some urination getting a little more, I'm gonna watch her, maybe do some blood work, just to check to see that that's not a potential issue. Um, so again, those are things that I wanna kind of watch. I'm glad to see her drinking quite, you know, drinking well, but I'm gonna kind of watch, is she overly drinking so I can monitor her buckets, but then is she urinating a lot of it out? So that's where you may want to consult with your veterinarian to see, especially with these older horses, where it's not uncommon to deal with insulin resistance and Cushing's disease, you may get into those kinds of things. So those are some of the things, and again, I can check all this out, whether I have the horse or not, I can look and see in their stalls and adjust accordingly. So those are things to think as the things are changing up, the weather's changing, it's getting warmer, um, those are things that you wanna consider as you're on the show arena and your show route, those are things that you wanna consider and consult with your veterinarian.